In this video, we're going to use iMovie as a way of putting together a series of photos of student artwork to create a beautiful presentation for celebration. So opening up iMovie, I tap on the plus to create a new project and select movie. Even though we're working with photos, we're going to create a movie. Now on the left, under media, Photos is the option that we need to access the pictures that I've taken of the student artwork. So now I'm scrolling through my camera roll and I'm looking for four pictures. There they are, the student's artwork. And I just tap on four pictures and then select create movie at the bottom of the screen. When I tap create movie, iMovie imports those photos into the timeline of iMovie. And now I tap, tap play and you can see as the playhead moves through the photos, there's a tiny bit of movement. Now, this is called the Ken Burns effect after the documentary filmmaker Ken Burns, who created a lot of films about the Wild West and obviously had to rely on photos and develop this way of making them look more interesting by panning and moving over the photo. The process is very simple. Essentially, it's about creating a start point and an end point, and iMovie does the rest. So ensuring that the playhead is at the beginning of your photo, pinch to zoom in on your starting point, and that can be anywhere in the photo. I'm gonna make this really obvious by zooming right in to the boy's pupil, and then when I press play, it zooms out. Because the end point, so if I tap on the photo, the end point now, I position that to make that a little, little bit more balanced and in the middle, like so. So that's going to be my end point, but I have to make sure that the playhead is at the end of that clip. So now when I press play, we zoom out from the start point to the end point. So if we take now the second image of the eye, the girl's eye, I'm going to start and zoom right into the pupil, like so. And the playhead is at the beginning of the photo. And now if I just quickly move to the end of the image and choose my end point at the end of the image, like so. So now when I press play, we should have two exactly the same of zooming out of the pupil to reveal more of the image. So I'm not gonna speak on this one, but you can see I've started the beginning point the end point, like so. And finally, on the last image, the same thing. Choose your starting position, and then choose your end position, like so. So I'm doing it completely the opposite for this last one slightly different. All right, so essentially, just make sure the playhead's at the beginning of the picture and pinch to create your starting point and do the same for the end of the picture. So now I press play. We're moving through these images and this will look fantastic on a display during parents' evening, the picture's displaying. Now what I want to do is I can make the picture longer which will make the zoom slower. So when I tap on an image, you'll notice that at each end of the image are some yellow bars. And I can tap hold on those yellow bars and drag a finger to essentially make the picture longer in seconds or shorter. And if I make it longer, that panning movement will be slower. Do you see? So I'm just gonna drag this yellow handle to make that longer. And I can do it on this eye as well. The second image, just tap. And it doesn't matter where I do it, I just tap, drag and hold. It takes a little bit of getting used to. 
Now when I tap on an image, you can see now I've got some choice at the bottom. So I, this is where I can add filters and titles if I want to. The titling options are brilliant and it's template based. So you don't really have to worry about anything other than whether it's going to go in the center of the image or maybe at the bottom, the lower portion of the image. I'm not going to run through all the titling options as it would make this video far too long and they're all fairly self-explanatory. But we do need to think about other things that we can add, the ingredients that we can add to our slideshow to make it interesting. So tapping on audio and soundtracks in the top right of the screen, there are lots of built-in sounds that you can use if your students maybe aren't going to create something in GarageBand. I'm just gonna select this one and then just preview it. And if I like it, I just tap on the plus in the far right and that adds it to the timeline. And you can see that it's just added the sound to fit my edit of images. So tapping on the green sound effect, you can see now I'm given some options at the bottom, volume is one of them. And if I tap on the word fade, I can fade the beginning of the track so it fades in. And then if I scroll to the end, tap the audio track again, select fade, I can trim the end. So what we get is a lovely sort of fade in of the soundtrack. Now when you're happy with your video and you've added all the ingredients, tap on the word done in the top left corner and that will take you back to your start screen and here I would quickly name your project. So I'm just going to call this art with pencils and charcoal like so and now tapping the share option. I'm given lots of choice as to where I can export my finished film to because the iMovie project isn't a film in itself. I need to export it. So I could add this to YouTube, I could put this into Google Classroom or One, um, OneNote, Shobi. When I've chosen the place where I want it to go, I then select the size. Now I'm just gonna select medium because I'm saving this to the camera roll because it's gonna go onto the school website and my video has exported to the photo library and I can give it to the IT guys and they can post that onto the school website.